I love my iPhone, but it has way more control over me than I wish it did. Unless I'm conscious about it, I'll pick it up as the first thing I do each morning. And I don't love that. I've considered low distraction alternatives before, like a dumb phone or a light phone, but they've never done quite enough to be truly compelling, at least until now. A few months ago, the folks at Books reached out and asked, can you keep a secret? If you can keep a secret, then we'll send you a product we're still actively developing, but you can't talk about it. And so this thing showed up at my door and I couldn't talk about it, at least until today. So let's do that. Let's talk about it in today's video. So what is it? Well, it's basically the e-ink iPod touch of my dreams, aside from running Android. If you're new to the channel, e-ink is a display technology that looks a bit like newspaper. You're probably familiar with it if you've ever seen a Amazon Kindle. The cool thing about it is it only uses battery when the screen actually changes, and this gives you crazy levels of battery life. Instead of days, it's more like weeks. Oh, and it's also much better for your eyes than a traditional screen. This particular one runs Android and can do everything your other Android devices can do but in a palmable six inch form factor. Here's my iPhone 13 mini for a size comparison. I have average size hands and I can use it comfortably with one hand and still reach all the buttons. It has Bluetooth, a warming backlight and does everything that you would expect an e-ink device to do. Well, except for pen input, it doesn't actually do that. But where this device really shines is it's fantastic for reading. It supports all the reading services that I use on a regular basis like Kindle, using regular PDFs, or the fantastic Readwise Reader, link down in the comments if you're not already using it. And it does all of those very, very well. That's largely due to its 300 pixel per inch screen and my favorite thing about it, which is its use of side buttons, which I know sounds weird. In this case, there are four of them, a lock button, which is obvious, a full screen refresh button, which enables you to run a fast refresh rate at the expense of some ghosting, and then ask the device for a nice crisp image when it's time to read. But the really nice feature here is this rocker button, which is kind of like a volume button. Actually, it used to be a volume button, but now it's a scroll control. It enables you to paginate your Android apps, which is a huge step towards getting full e-ink usability here on Android. And I'm hopeful that we're gonna see this in all books devices moving forward. The side buttons can be configured differently for specific apps. This is really handy because Kindle, for example, doesn't respond to the page down command. It instead hijacks the volume button. So what we'll do instead is we'll set those buttons to be volume buttons when we're in the Kindle app. This leaves you where you can use those scroll buttons in all of your apps and you no longer have to think about which app you're actually using. And it's killer in something like Readwise Reader, where traditionally you'd have to scroll through this. And the painting on this device is pretty good, but scrolling in general on ink isn't the best experience. So I can scroll through my RSS feed with low eye strain and still have really good scrolling performance. And it's even improved by the fact that I can scroll through it a page at a time, which makes for a really nice experience. When I see something that looks interesting that I wanna read, I can just tap and hold on it and add it to my inbox. And that's basically how I use Readwise Reader in general. By throwing articles to my inbox instead of reading them immediately, it's more likely that I'll realize that I wasn't actually that interested in the article and end up only reading the articles I really care about. So in this case, I've got 22 things that I plan on reading. Again, I can scroll with my finger or I can scroll with these sidebar buttons and then tap through to actually read. If I ever want a full screen refresh, I can just press the side button and then the quality gets really good. It's really good but still not quite perfect. Something I'd love to see in a future firmware update is the concept of a hybrid refresh mode. I'd love to be able to have books fast mode as my scroll mode, and then the ability to press the full refresh button and get a regal quality refresh. The current behavior is when you press refresh, it'll still only render up to the fast mode quality. I'd love to be able to combine the best of both worlds to have an amazing reading experience. So should you buy it? I think ultimately you're gonna have to decide that for yourself. But what I can tell you is that it has replaced the Kindle Oasis for bedtime reading for me. It hasn't, however, replaced it for on-the-go reading because up until today, I haven't been able to take it into public. But I think if you catch me at one of my daughter's swim meets from now on, 
I'll likely have this thing with me. Unfortunately, I'll still also have this thing with me, at least until Books decides to make a version of this with a SIM card. I guess a boy can hope, right? Thank you so much for watching. You can help me out a ton by throwing a like on this video to help with the algorithm. And if you're new around here, subscribe for more videos like this one. For instance, I just created a video on what's on my desk where I've curated my 40 favorite things from the last eight years of working from home. Go give it a watch. It could use it. And until next time, have a great day.